Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Kanna Campbell and this is Sugar Mama TV. Great to be back as you guys know I am publishing a fresh video for you every Thursday afternoon for your financial motivation education and inspiration so if you haven't already please make sure that you are subscribed to my youtube channel and that notification bell is switched on and remember I'm doing balanced content between financial education and of course my lifestyle content which includes motherhood capsule wardrobe fashion and beauty life hacks all right, so today's video, I'm going to talk to students. If you are a student wondering what you should do with your money, what you, can you do to get ahead so that you get your money working for you, this is the perfect video because I'm going to share with you my top bits of general financial advice for you so that you feel really educated, you feel really empowered, and you feel really inspired to not only take what I'm going to share with you in this video, but to go and dream and stretch even further in your life to achieve even more. Because I promise you, it is mind blowing what you can achieve when you understand money and you understand how to make sure money works for you in the right way, matching your value system. All right, let's get started. Number one is student debt. I know it can feel incredibly overwhelming and at times depressing thinking about student debt. I come across so many people who say to me, I'm not even gonna bother worrying about my finances right now. I'm just gonna enjoy my life and spend my money because I have so much student debt. It's gonna be forever before that debt's paid in my life. Now, this is a very toxic attitude and mindset to have. There's a couple of things you need to know about student debt because there are some myths and rumors that student debt is free debt. There's no interest rate and it's the cheapest debt you'll ever get so you never need to worry about paying it off. That's not quite accurate. You need to know this. Number one, student debt actually goes up. It's linked to the CPI. So as you guys know, we're in a high inflation environment, which means the CPI is going up, which means your student debt is going up. So if you're one of those people who has this complacent attitude where they don't really care about their student debt, you are potentially getting deeper and deeper into debt. But knowing this can allow you to take control of that and stop that from happening and ideally start paying it off. The second thing that you need to know about your student debt is it actually counts towards your credit score. That's right, that magical exciting day where you decide to go and buy the home of your dreams and you go to the bank to apply for your loan, they will see if you have student debt. They'll see how much and for how long you've been having it. And that may impact the amount of money that you're able to borrow. Now you're gonna to wanna to know about this now rather further down the track when you go to buy your dream home. So you can decide whether you wanna make and take a more serious approach and attitude towards that student debt. And the third thing you might wanna take into consideration if you're thinking of returning back and doing more tertiary education, whether it be university or TAFE, but taking on more debt is, if you are already in student debt and you're not worrying about it, well, guess what? Your debts are not only going up, but we all know that the more debt you're in, the longer it takes to pay it off and the harder it is to pay that off. So say, for example, you're in $50,000 with student debt and you want to go back and do a master's or some sort of postgraduate course, which is another 30, 35,000, you're going to be in $85,000 worth of student debt. And if we go and apply that increasing CPI interest rate, ouch, there is a lot of debt getting out of control, but you don't have to let it be this way. Look at your budget and see what repayments you can make towards your student debt. Keeping in mind that any extra repayments you make cannot be withdrawn. So you need to be sure about what you are doing. But as I said, the smaller the debt is, by you making proactive, ad hoc or regular payments, it's gonna make it so much easier once you're in full-time work and you've got a better cash flow to smash and pay that debt off and never need to worry about it impacting your credit score. Now you know this. My second bit of advice to students, and that is to always make sure you have emergency money, particularly if you are a casual employee because you don't have the same entitlements and rights. 
You don't have the same rights if you were to lose your job or be laid off. You don't get annual leave. You don't get sick leave. You may not get long service leave. There are so many things that you may not be entitled to that the average employee gets. So it is so important that you have emergency money set aside, particularly if you end up being in between jobs. You need to make sure you can still maintain your financial responsibilities. So make sure you have in a separate, dedicated savings account, nicknamed your emergency money, some emergency money, and work out what the right amount is for you and your responsibilities. Number three is to start investing. It is never ever too early to start investing. It is absolutely incredible when you put something in place and you have the power of time, which you guys have, and compounding interest. Something very simple but exciting I wanna share with you. If you could start with say $10,000 and invest it, and then you contributed $200 per week towards that investment portfolio. Never touching it, leave it as a set and forget long-term buy and hold strategy. Taking into consideration, of course, inflation, income tax, and obviously fees such as brokerage. If you were to assume an average return of 7.5% per annum net, and you were not to touch that $200, not touch that $10,000, just let it be, stick to that strategy, not even worry about increasing it. Over the 30 year period, you could have up to $1.16 million in investments. And guess what? Over $800,000 of that is actually interest. That is your money working for you. So this is something very, very simple that everyone can go and set up for themselves. Now you might be listening to this and watching this thinking, hang on, Kana, I don't have $10,000 to invest today and I don't have $200 per week. I'm on a tight budget, which is probably why you're watching this video. Well, guess what? That's okay. You just simply need to start. Start with say $1,000, maybe start with $50 per week, but look to when you can add more to that portfolio to catch it up to that $10,000 initial starting amount. And you might be able to only do $50 per month, one month, but then six months later, as you try and review your budget and look for other income earning opportunities, you might be able to bump it to $80 per month. And then you might be able to bump it up to 120 per month. You might even be able to do more than $200 per month, but have a go. Set up a regular investment plan, set up a great habit system where you are constantly investing and building your own financial wealth and independence. And again, the power of time and compounding interest is incredibly magical, inspiring and empowering if you're serious about your financial future. So look into investing sooner rather than later. Number four is to sort your superannuation out. Guess what? Every time you chop and change your superannuation account, it is actually costing you money because each time you are changing superannuation, you're paying fees, you're paying brokerage. And if your superannuation account has done reasonably well, you might be triggering a capital gain, which means paying some capital gains tax or crystallizing a capital loss. Can I give you some great general financial advice? Set it up the right way first and leave it at that knowing it's right for you and your financial goals. Invest some time exploring all the different superannuation accounts and work out what is right for you. Now, generally speaking, this is not product advice or strategic advice. These are the four things I look for in a quality superannuation account. Number one is a wide range of different investments from different fund managers. So being able to access a wide range of shares, say the top 200 ASX, I want to make sure that I can access listed investment companies, a wide range of ETFs from a different range of fund managers. I also want to be able to access potentially term deposits, bonds, fixed interest, ethical investments, the more the better, because it's going to really allow me to diversify my superannuation portfolio, which is my investment portfolio. But also it's going to allow me to help reduce my investment risk and custom and tailor my portfolio to my financial goals. So that is the first thing I would look for when it comes to a superannuation account. The second thing I would look for is being able to access personal insurance like life cover, TPD cover, and most importantly, income protection. The third thing I would look for in a quality superannuation account is an in-specie transfer service for when I go to an allocated pension at retirement. This is a very valuable benefit that not all superannuation providers actually have. 
Basically, it means you can transfer your superannuation account into a retirement account without triggering any capital gains tax. Now, at the moment, capital gains tax, depending on how long you hold an asset within super, ranges between 10% to 15%. But if you have, say, over a million dollars in superannuation and that million dollars is accessible, that little benefit could have just saved you $100,000 in tax. You want to know about the in species transfer service, trust me. And then the fourth thing I would look for is then the fees and costs. Don't just go for the cheapest superannuation account because sometimes they're not worth the paper they're written on. There are a lot of monkey superannuation accounts, lemon superannuation accounts out there. So avoid the bad ones because they're just going to cost you money in the long run, as well as a lot of time and frustration. And then number five, my top piece of general financial advice for students, and that is being aware of the lifestyle creep. All right, so when we get a pay rise, a promotion, a new job, we get more money paid into our bank account each fortnight or each week or each month, our lifestyle quickly starts to adjust. We start buying the same thing, but the more expensive version of the same thing, or we start buying more of the same things. You need to really stay in control of your money. I'm not here to tell you you can't go and spend your money and enjoy your money. I want you to do all those things, but I want you to do them in the right way with the right priorities where you are completely and utterly in control of your money, your cash flow and your budget. So every time you get a bonus, a pay rise, a promotion, a new job, look at your budget, look at the new amount of money that's going to be paid to you after tax and proactively decide how you want to spend that money. So you might say, I've got an extra $500 per month after tax with this new promotional pay rise. I want to now put $200 towards my lifestyle and allow myself to enjoy a few more treats, but the other $300 I'm going to be putting towards one of my many exciting financial goals and allow myself to get ahead. Because I guarantee this, if you don't do this, Three months after experiencing your promotion or your pay rise, you'll be scratching your head going, where did all this new money go? I'm still left poor at the end of the month for my pay cycle. Uh, uh I want you to stay completely educated, empowered and in control of your cash flow. You control that lifestyle, not the other way around. All right, everyone, that is it for this video. My five pieces of general financial advice for students. Let me know what you think of this video. Let me know if it's helpful and let me know what other videos you would like to hear from me, both financial and of course, lifestyle. Now, don't forget, I have two Instagram accounts. If you didn't realize it, I have Sugar Mama TV and then I have Canna Campbell Official where I love to have a good old fashioned laugh at the juggle of life. I share capsule wardrobe fashion, minimalism, motherhood, and beauty hacks as well. So lots of entertainment and fun for you and education on both channels. All right, everyone, that is enough from me. Have a fantastic weekend and I will see you next Thursday for more videos. Ciao for now.